Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Thank you for joining me. Today I have a very brief video about the Color Mask script. This is a script that's super powerful because anytime we do image processing, we want the ability to be able to select certain attributes of an image, be it something in terms of its brightness, its detail, or in this case, its color. If you can selectively capture particular parts of an image and its color, you might be able to operate on that part of the image and do some pretty cool things. So the Color Mask script has always been um, of that nature, allowing you to select particular colors, but it had a confusing aspect to it previously, and I pointed that out in a previous video. Then I made another video which illustrated a kind of a quick fix to do what I think the Color Mask uh, script had always intended in terms of usability, and now today those videos are probably much uh, relegated to the the trash can now because uh, a couple of very clever uh, developers have now improved the script in such a way that it does everything you would ever expect it to do in a way that is not confusing at all. In fact, it's much more user-friendly than it ever has been. Now, you wouldn't know this unless you were monitoring, say, the PixInsight forum where people tend to talk about things or announce things like this. So in the description down below this video, I have a link on my website where you can just click on the, uh, the download to just grab this script and install it if you'd like, the latest version. I'll try to make sure that my link points to the latest version. Ultimately, hopefully, they'll have a repository for this thing, um, or maybe even better, uh, the PixInsight developers will actually just put it as an official part of the distribution uh, for the software, this latest version, I mean, of the Color Mask script. So join me. Let me show you some of the cool features now of this script and how easy it is to use. Uh, and this is just my way of letting people know, if you didn't know, it's pretty cool now. So check it out. Now we need a nice colorful picture in order to demonstrate the use of the color mask tool. So I've chosen one of the most colorful pieces of sky, the region around Ro Ofuyuki, which you can see on the wall behind me, though it probably doesn't look great in this kind of darkened room. But on the screen, you can see this wonderful image and all of its colors. So I already have the script loaded here, and I'm going to be showing you in the right place here in PixInsight, and I'm going to be showing you version 4. It's my understanding that now version 5 is available. And again, in the link down below, the uh, link to my website, I will have uh, the download for the latest version. Um, but I'm just going to be showing you version 4 because I haven't yet had a chance to look at the latest thing in the past few days. I don't think there are going to be any major changes with respect to what I want to talk about here. Now, here are the uh, clever uh, developers. We have Boris and Mike. Boris took my suggestion here and made this beautiful color wheel um, in the hue space so that it makes it very easy to see what colors we're talking about when we either use the presets, as you'll see in a moment, or we can select colors by now clicking on an image, which is even one step further in terms of uh, you, uh, you know, fantastic usability and flexibility to be able to get just the colors we want um, and then create a mask of those uh, sets of values. So first of all, the image I'm going to be working with here is an already stretched image. So if you have a nonlinear image, you're going to want to enable the STF so that you can see what's going on. In this case, I have a, a, a nonlinear image already stretched, so I don't need to enable the STF. Now, just as there were in the past, there are these presets where you can click uh, the button here and it'll uh, select that particular part of the color wheel. So those particular hues, those particular colors. Uh, blue, for example, might subtend this part of the color wheel, uh, but we can actually change the, the angle through which um, all the colors are selected. So right now it's at 30, which is narrow. The default, this used to be the default. Here's the 60 degree selection. Uh, and then you can even go wider than that 120 and select a whole bunch of colors. Notice that there is a dark arc here between the two lines that uh, capture the colors. Uh, note that if we change with the sliders here what we're selecting, we could select a very large swath of the color filter wheel. And the idea is you, you, you might think that, oh, it's this part is what we're selecting. No, it's the part that is um, highlighted, well, not highlighted, but darkened here with the, uh, the dark broad line. 
I think that can be a little confusing if you first look at this tool. You might think I'm selecting this, but it's the stuff that's in between um, the dark lines. So let's play with the tool for a moment. Let's just say we were selecting blue elements of this image. Certainly there is some blue. The default here is to create a chrominance mask, which means that the mask is going to be generated based on the strength of the color, kind of like the color saturation. So I'm expecting, for example, that if I uh, you know, use this set of colors here, I'm going to get a mask which will mostly show me this thing and maybe that because these are some of the blues. Although it won't be very strong, I bet. We probably need to include some of the cyan here, which we're not including if I just choose the preset. So let's just see what happens here when we get this mask. And here we go. We got the blue up here. We got a little bit of that blue there, which is represented as this thing. And then some blue over here, I guess, in the mask. Oh yeah, right around that star, there's certainly a reflection nebula, and that's blue. So there are other blue bits, uh, but it's very, very low in terms of its degree. Uh, so there's some blueness in here, which is showing up in the mask. So the chrominance mask is a really good way. Uh, it's proportional to what I think of perceptually when I look at an image in terms of the brightness of what I'm seeing for the color that I want to capture, for a color range, I should say. Um, it makes sense because I want this color and I want this color and I want it to be based, the mask to be based kind of on the strength of how much color, kind of like the saturation that I'm seeing. There's another selection here where we can choose the uh, lightness version of that and that will determine the strength of the mask instead. I'll get to that in just a moment. So let's come back here to the color script. If you happen to load the color script here and you load it on an image that is not a color image, you can select the one that you need to over here. So this will show you all your views and the target one. So don't get freaked out if, for example, you create a mask as I did and then you reopen the tool and the mask is the one that's selected. Just reselect the, uh, the appropriate color image. So now let's do this with a real goal in mind. I'm going to choose that uh, in this image, perhaps I want, you know, in my image here, the, the yellowness here is not very striking. It's okay, um, but maybe we wanted more. We want more yellow for that yellow part of the nebula that's surrounding uh, Antares. We want that to stand out more. Lots of people like very striking color, right? So if I were to try to select this color, uh, the preset probably wouldn't do everything that I wanted to select the colors here, because maybe I want these colors and maybe even including something over here. Now I can make a guess by um, you know, taking a preset and then adjusting it to do some particular range and mess around. But as I mentioned, one of the cool flexible parts of the tool now is to be able to click on the image. So uh, it's easy enough just to say, okay, I, I really want to central of the central color here to be maybe this this kind of color yellow and that should hopefully include some of this and maybe some of the other um, slightly more red versions here so i click there and now i get another line let me just click on a blue area so you can see i click on the image and now it shows me the color that i've actually selected it's another additional line so this wouldn't be included right now, but it's showing me where on the wheel, on the color wheel, it, um, it lands. So that yellow here obviously is within this range, right? Uh, so the yellow range is actually not bad. Let me just show you what that looks like. Again, I'm gonna use the chrominance mask. I'll show you the lightness mask in a moment. So let's look at what this is just for pure, uh, what would be yellow for 60 degrees there. This is what we get which looks pretty good, but what if I wanted to include a little bit more of this stuff that's also red? Because I'm calling this whole area here kind of my yellow-red thing that I want to increase the, the color saturation of or maybe change the color balance of in some way. So I'm gonna go back to the tool where we'll go to Script Utilities, and here we go. Uh, here's the example I wanted to show. See, I'm on the mask. It says a color image must be supplied. Color, of course, with an OU. Uh, that should tell you who did this part. This would be Mike's doing uh, the uh, clicking of the image there because he put a U in front of the O. So here we go. Get back to a color image. And now we can legally click anywhere we want. But it's not so much the clicking. I just know that I need to increase uh, the inclusiveness of the colors that I'm doing here. So my start hue, I'll just make a little bit more towards the red like that. And now when I do it, 
I will be including hopefully more of uh, the information that's over here. You can now see that this is really what I was going for. Uh, now I'm going to go back there and I'd like to show you the difference between a chrominance mask and a lightness mask for this range of values. So we're going to go back to script, utilities, go to Brighton. I'm going to now just change, I'll keep my range the same, of course go back to my color image, and just output a lightness mask of this range. And you can see the difference. Lightness means that the lightness value here of this particular color range, of these colors, you know, so it's still going to only select these colors, but the strength of the mask is going to be determined by how bright the pixel is at that color. So let's go ahead and hit this. And now you can see in terms of proportional strength, uh, this is much brighter than this because the strength is being, being determined not by kind of the saturation or the density of the color, but instead by the brightness of these pixels in the uh, target, in the original image. Notice something else here, if we zoom in, here, uh, when we're not doing it by uh, brightness, uh, these stars, uh, because they don't have much saturation um, in the original image here, they're kind of whitish mostly, the uh, chrominance mask is going to basically ignore most of the stars. Whereas in the lightness mask, uh, some of those stars are more included. And so we might, you know, take that into account here. Uh, more of these stars here you can see are included in the mask, which means when I change the color or change some part of this image with respect to what's being selected, it's going to affect the stars more here than it will here. So that's a consideration to be made. Therefore, a, a chrominance mask to me really makes the most sense for this particular image if I want to change the something about this color um, as I've mentioned. Now, I'm going to come back here to the, the tool one more time. So now let me just show you, a moment ago we, collect, we clicked here to identify any particular color, but if we want to be able to do that with a little more ease, with a left click of the mouse, we can draw uh, you know, a region here and basically zoom in to a part of the region where it might make it easier for us to click and get particular colors that we want. Then we can reset the zoom just by doing this and we get a zoomed out image again. If you don't like the little line that's showing up here, you can go ahead and just clear the selection and, uh, you know, remove that confusing line if it bothers you. Now, if that wasn't enough, we've been setting the range here and adjusting just by doing the preset or just by clicking here and then um, moving these around. But you could also do the following, or I could have done the following. Here, I'll clear the selection. What I could do is do the start hue, and I could say the start hue I would do on the more redder thing here. And then I would say the end hue would be the more yellower thing here. And this might be then a better way to kind of get that range of uh, values that I'm trying to um, uh, encompass here within my mask. Now setting this back to roughly what I had before, I had a little bit of that red and then we had something, you know, along these lines or so. I'm just going to go ahead and regenerate this. Okay, so this is again that chrominance mask and I'd just like to demonstrate what happens when we adjust the mask strength. So let me go ahead and do that. All I'm going to do here is Go like this and say adjust mask strength and you'll see what happens. Um, you'll notice that it says the slider controls how strongly hues away from the midpoint, away from here, are going to be affected. Now, I suspect this effect is going to be very modest, uh, but we can blink the images and see because, yeah, most of the color here is pretty similar. All that's going to happen is we're going to get fewer colors. It's like we're feathering the edges of our color selection in the color space, not in the actual mask, right? Just in terms of that range of colors, we're getting more and more uh, towards that central color, uh, more exacting. We could just change the, um, uh, <clears throat> we could change the range, but here you can see that we're just being more selective for this given range that we've chosen. So it's like feathering the color space, if you will. Now this is different than something else that is here that I want to show you, which is the luminance, or lightness, I think. Hold on, let's get to, sorry, luminance value, right. 
So the mask strength, we can also adjust uh, the luminance value that is going to be like a, a minimum threshold of uh, generating some output in the mask, if you will. But it's based on the value of the image, uh, the values, the luminance value of the image itself. So in other words, if pixels here are dark enough, then they won't show up. Let's make this like 50%. They won't show up in the final mask at all. Let's be sure I'm on the color image. I've made that mistake so many times now. So let's uh, do this one here and we'll see the difference. Now, if we blink these two, you'll see that there are many, many values here. Let's see the mask becomes much smaller. It's because in these locations, all of these locations that are showing up here, if we come over here and we look at the actual values, see how that says 0.46? Well, that is less than 0.5, which is what I set. So those won't show up in the other, uh, here in this mask, those uh, parts won't show up in the output, even though those colors are properly, they're within range, but they're no longer bright enough to be included. Which, by the way, sh should mean that I should basically, if I change this to the lightness mask instead of the chrominance mask, this is the chrominance mask here, I should get the, exactly the same shape. It'll just be brighter. Uh, exactly the same mask, but it should be brighter. Let's just demonstrate that. That's easy enough to do. Just change this back to here. Change this to a lightness mask. Go like that. And here it is. And these two, in terms of the parts that are being selected within that color range are basically the same thing um, being controlled by that thresholding that we've put in place. Now you can do the same kind of logic by adjusting for the chrominance values, but boy, that gets a little tricky. I'll let you experiment on your own with that because you know, it's the ratio of colors at any particular brightness that determines the color that we perceive on the screen. So messing around with a threshold in particular color um, is going to be interesting depending upon the colors that you select. And I'll just leave it at that. One final modification for these masks is that you can blur the mask uh, preemptively here um, when you're generating it by removing layers of the image. Uh, this works in the same sense that MLT, where you're moving the wavelet layers uh, of the image at, at a particular scale. So, uh, the, you know, one and two and three, those are the very smallest pixel scales. But uh, I have found, just me personally, that I like to generate these masks. And if I want to do that kind of operation, I prefer just using convolution on the mask. Uh, but there you go. You can use the, uh, the blurring the layers here. One more thing that I'll mention is that I've been talking about a range of colors here. It might be in certain images, you would want to select both blue things and yellow things, but not anything else in between. Uh, there are a number of approaches for doing this. I think probably the easiest approach is to just literally generate two masks and then combine them like with maximum or something else, say in pixel math. So you could just generate the two masks and then operate on the two masks themselves to capture those two very different um, parts of the color space. I guess in all fairness, I should go ahead and just show you that uh, if I do remove layers, we will get a mask that looks a little bit blurrier. Here it is. You can see the effect of doing that. Um, we blur out all the smaller details and we're leaving mostly just larger things here. Uh, but this wouldn't necessarily help me if I again wanted to avoid um, any of the color changes that are going to occur to the star. So before I leave you, I'd better do the thing. We've now created perhaps the mask that we're interested in. So let me, <laughs> I've been messing around and showing you all the different ways to adjust it, but I haven't actually finalized it. So I want a chrominance mask. I want this particular range that I've got here. And then we'll just do some final adjustment, you know, that's going to make it an interesting thing to do. I want my mask strength to be 100%. And I think that should do it. Let's just go ahead and create this mask again. So this is the mask that I always wanted. These I'll remove. And now I have everything I want so that I can make the adjustment, the final adjustment to the image. I put this on here as a mask, make it not visible. 
And then let's do some kind of curves here. Here's curves transformation. We'll go ahead and turn on our real time preview. Perhaps we want to increase the color saturation. Maybe we want to add more of these little oranges in here. Perhaps we want to mess around with the, I don't know, the B channel or something like that. You can see the, now I'm really getting into some really saturated color here by doing that. Uh, we could even change the color balance by, you know, uh, increasing or decreasing the amount of blue here, whatever it is. Oh, that's ugly. Yeah, so maybe this way. Uh, and then we go, okay, I'm just going to close this and apply this to the image. And there we are. Let's go before and after. And we really are only affecting these colors. We're not changing the color balance of the stars, but we are changing uh, the degree to which we have that color saturation and whatever these adjustments are doing to this part of the nebula. Boy, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the color script. Um, color mask script is really now come into its own. And again, there's even a newer version. This is four I've just demonstrated, but there's five. And I suspect that because there's some continued excitement about this, that there will be more. I do hope that they have eventually a repository, but as a uh, one last reminder down below, click uh, to visit my page so you can download the latest version. Also, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of the video. I hope you like us, and I uh, hope to see you again in another one on this channel. Thank you very much.